My name is Henry Hobhouse Turton, and I joined the ship Fatima from Plymouth, England, on the 7th of February 1850. I found my berth rather narrow, but I felt I would be comfortable for the long voyage ahead, as my room had a window. On board, the other passengers were Mr. and Mrs. Wright and their two daughters, Mr. and Mrs. Clark with their eight children, and the surgeon, Mr. Wilkins. I became quite close to these families during the voyage. There were usually 19 for formal dinners at the captain's table, if we were not affected by seasickness. There were also approximately 200 emigrants on board. The food was prepared by the ship's cook and was quite tasty. On board, there were a number of chickens, ducks and pigs that were slaughtered for fresh meat on most nights. We were served by the ship's steward, who is generally a kind man. However, he became quite short with me when I spilled a bottle of ink over a white tablecloth whilst I was writing in my journal during rough weather. The long voyage was fairly enjoyable. I was able to spend most of my time up on the deck, reading, taking in the sights, walking, and talking to the captain and first mate, who shared with me the midday latitude and longitude readings, so I could record them in my daily journal. These readings showed me how far and fast we were travelling. A couple of times when the wind was becalmed, we hardly moved at all. Another time, during a wild storm, the readings indicated we had actually travelled backwards. As we ventured through the tropics, the weather became very hot, humid and uncomfortable. Tempest became quite frayed and a number of arguments broke out amongst the emigrants. I spent most of my time up on the deck. However, sometimes it was too hot to be outside. To film the time, I sometimes did algebra sums, played games of chess with my fellow passengers, and listened to Mr. Wright, who read aloud from his books. Often, some of the emigrants would listen in also. On Sundays, there would be a church service with hymns. I spent quite a lot of time with Mrs. Wright when they weren't feeling too poorly. Miss Wright spent a lot of time doing needlework and was an excellent sketch artist. The crew caught three albatrosses while we were on board. Miss Wright tied hers to the mast, sketched it and then let it go. I got the butcher to slaughter mine so it could be stuffed and I could keep it. But I noticed several of the emigrants grabbed the third bird and killed it brutally so they could eat it. I was able to take regular baths on deck, my clothes were washed and I could occasionally bring my bedding up to air it out. I noticed the emigrants didn't bathe very often if at all and they only got access to their trunks once or twice for fresh clothes. By the end of the trip, most of them looked rather bedraggled. When the voyage was over, all aboard were infected with idleness, and it was difficult to motivate myself to do much. I was very glad when we finally arrived in Port Adelaide, passed through quarantine, and were able to leave the ship.